Hey, what's up guys? Today we're doing a video on Romania. Erdelei Majerorsag! Plaka! Welcome to Romania, a country located in Eastern Europe that 95% of the US population can't point on the map. It's a country of a bit less than 20 million people and a place I went to several times by bike. Romania consists of three major parts, Wallachia, Moldavia and Transylvania. Mia fas Mondal? Romania is a special country, as it is surrounded by almost no one related to it, except Moldova, as they are a romance country swimming in a sea of Slavs and Hungarian spastics. Thus the place stands out as soon as you cross the border, which might I add is one of the easiest border crossings in the EU. The Romanian border police are some of the best people out there, always greeting you with a smile and just let you come in with minimal hassle, unlike with some countries. Anyways, you'll enter the country and the first thing you will see is a bunch of villages. One thing that differs from them compared to other non-Romanian villages in the region are the arches of the houses, which really scream I'M NOT SLAVIC! If you continue following the road, you'll see the beautiful countryside of Romania. Golden fields of wheat and whatever crops they're growing alongside with the blue sky. Honestly, Romania's countryside in Wallachia is some of the best ones out there. Fuck talking about Dracula, this here should be the real tourist attraction. Anyways, after following the not so yellow brick road, you'll end up in one of the three biggest Romanian cities. Bucharest, Cluj Napoca and Timisoara. I've been to two out of the three cities, so I'll be talking mostly about Timisoara and Bucharest. If you are a budget traveler and often fly on budget airlines, you've probably at one point been to Timisoara or have thought about going there. It's almost famous for this bad boy, the Timisoara Orthodox Church. Built in 1941, this son of a bitch stands 90.5 meters tall, aka 300 feet, for those of you with a concussion. It's built in the neo-Moldavian style of architecture, which gives it its flair. Even though orthodox, Romanian churches stand out amongst the crowd with their colorful facades and romance architecture. Near the church, you also have the statue of the wolf that fed Romul and Rem, the infamous mad lads that built Rome and civilized the rest of the barbarian swine us non-Latins call ancestors. There you also got the Victoria Square and all the stuff that comes with it. Mostly just breathtaking architecture which unlike in the rest of Europe that's built in Renaissance, Gothic and Baroque styles, Timisoara has the Secessionist style. Literally called Secessionist. And it's pretty dope. The entire city is like a piece of art compared to some other ex-communist cities. Timisoara has kept its tradition and it suits it well. Oh, and also, Timisoara has a bunch of parks, well, not just Timisoara, Romanian cities as a whole are riddled with parks, which are in most cases fairly maintained and a great place to chill out. Just look at this. I know I usually say in my videos, you've seen one park, you've seen them all, but these are just nice, you know? Hell, you even have the Bega River flowing through here, it's like the Garden of Eden up in here. Next up, we got the big boy, Bucharest. If you ever imagined what a metropolitan city looks like under a totalitarian communist government, you've probably imagined Bucharest. The majority of the city is built in the Stalinistic style of architecture. Huge block buildings rising above you met alongside with huge boulevards showcasing the grandeur of the city. One of the staples of the city would be the parliament building. The parliament building, aka in Romanian Palatul Parlamentului, is the second biggest government building in existence, the first one being the Pentagon. It has over 1000 rooms, 12 floors, 4 underground floors and a goddamn nuclear bunker. Not to mention over 20,000 workers were utilized to build this absolute unit of a building. I've seen the Hungarian parliament and in comparison to this big boy, it seems like a bloody midget. Of course Bucharest isn't just communist buildings, there are other styles sprouting all over the city, such as Baroque and Nauvoo, and even some late Byzantine, such as with the Stavropoleos Monastery. The Orthodox Bastion stands right in the center of the city and has been there since the 18th century when the Mad Lad Greek uh, built an inn alongside with the church. The damn thing has survived numerous earthquakes and managed to stay unscathed for the, for the most part. Today the monastery holds a shit ton of Byzantine and Orthodox artifacts, some of which you can even see in the courtyard. It has over 8,000 books 
on theology and Byzantine culture, so yeah, definitely a place worth checking out. Since we're already speaking about religion, it's worth mentioning that the Romanian Orthodox Church Patriarchate is located here as well. For those of you that don't know what a Patriarchate is, it's a lot like the Catholic Vatican, except they don't touch kids. It's a head organization of the church, with it being led by the Patriarch. No, not the Patriarchy, a Patriarch. A Pope type of figure that also shares his status with other Patriarchs of other churches. Serbia, Greece, Russia, Ukraine and of course Romania have their own variations of the Orthodox Church and thus their own Patriarchates. You can find it here on top of the hill where you got a pretty decent look at the city. And you got the Patriarchal Cathedral where you can see people coming to pray and not just tourists checking out the pretty building. There's also of course the pedestrian zone and known as Lipshani which is the youngest city center. Essentially it was artificially built around historical monuments such as Severopolis Monastery and the Old Prince Palace where the inventor of the original human shish kebab resided himself, Vlad Dracula. It's pretty aight. Overpriced shops and restaurants all over the place. If you're looking to have a cheap bite to eat I'd recommend not coming here. Same applies to all pedestrian zones across Europe. Near you also have the University Square where the University of Bucharest resides. Essentially it serves as a landmark and a place that produces uh, despicable sleep deprived creatures known as university students. And near you got the Roman Athenaeum which is just a gorgeous and definitely something worthy of busting a nut to. It serves as a concert hall and a meeting place for all the bourgeoisie. Now while Bucharest is a tall and grand city it also has a, a lot of shit that it tries to hide. For an example that it's falling apart, just go into one of the alley streets in the center and you'll see ruined buildings, mini trash dumps and potholes. Hell, even the tourist part of the city you'll see potholes and poverty. Which to be honest is expected, Romania has one of the highest poverty rates in the EU, 40%. 40% of Romanian citizens are at the risk of poverty and 30% of them are living in destroyed dwellings or slums. And this is even evident in the capital. Again, this is some of the shit I found in the city center. I'm sure there are far worse things on the outskirts, however, it's not all doom and gloom. Romania is one of the fastest developing economies and they are fixing the mess Ceausescu put them in the first place. Speaking of Ceausescu, this thick-lipped son of a bitch was the communist leader of Romania since 1965 till 1989, when Romania got sick of his shit and started the first and only anti-communist revolution that sought out to take him out of power. When the revolution started, he realized he done fucked up and tried fleeing via helicopter alongside his wife, but the military decided to pull an Italy and switch sides and captured the mad lad. In the end, he was executed with his wife under the charges of economic sabotage and genocide. If you got parents, which you probably should, go on and ask them about the revolution, as it was broadcasted on TV alongside his attempted escape with a helicopter. Good times. By the way, you guys remember the wolf statue in Timisoara? Yeah, there's another one here as well. Why might you ask? Well, they were actually a gift from the chin man himself, Benito Mussolini, in an attempt to bring Romania closer to Italy as they were descendants of the Romans. Mussolini gifted several wolf statues to the Romanian people and in the hopes of eventually creating a neo-Roman empire. That didn't really work out now did it Benny? But Italy isn't the only country that also has some influence in Romania. There's also France, the country because of which tourist guides and travel bloggers keep uncreatively calling Bucharest Little Paris. Why might this be the case? Well, mostly due to the architecture, which has a lot of France-like influence, and also that Triumph Arc. Chances are, if you've been to Europe, you've probably seen one of these at some point. There's one in Paris, another one in Vienna, and also one here in Bucharest. Yeah, really original guys. Essentially, this arch was built on purpose and one purpose only, so that the Romanian troops could march through it after World War I to symbolize their victory in it. That's it. That's all there is to it. Today they still use it to organize military parades near it and yeah, the Triumphal Arch. Now I mentioned Romania is also famous for its great parks, and this certainly is the case for Bucharest. You got a bunch of parks where you can chill out by the pond and just enjoy life until the existential dread sets in again. But one of the best parks is the Carroll Park. It's this huge park where at the end of there is the National Heroes Monument and alongside it is the Eternal Flame. Literally a flame that burns 24-7. It's even guarded by the military. The goddamn military. 
so you know they're not fucking around. Essentially, the flame and the monument there exist to commemorate the resting uh, place of a communist leader known as George Deya. And yeah, that's pretty much Bucharest. Now, if you want to know more about Romania, I made a video on Romanian music. Well, Romania's trash genre of music known as Manele, which you can check out by clicking the end screen card here. And yeah, you also got a shit ton of museums and galleries, but we all know nobody cares about checking that out unless you're really, really bored. Anyways, let me know what you think of Romania. Have you been there? Do you plan on going? Let me know in the comment section below. My name is Nick and you've watched Living Around the Clean Europe. <laughs>